Everyone, please turn off or silence all their cell phones and electronic devices. And at this time, I would recognize Legislator Peter Tui from Monroe to recognize our singer for the national anthem. Um, everybody, thank you for uh, coming tonight, and it's my honor to introduce Kira Joffrey to sing our national anthem. And uh, Kira is a senior, just started her first day of senior year in high school at Monroe Woodbury. Right. Peter, can we, can we move to the center so we can get you on the live stream? Can you hear me? Yes. <laughs> Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the Thank you, Kira, that was great. And on behalf of the Orange County Legislature, I have the Certificate of Appreciation for your outstanding performance of the National Anthem at the Orange County Legislative Session on September 5th, 2019, presented to Kira Joffrey, signed L. Stephen Brescher, Chairman, Orange County Legislature, 9th Judicial District. I also want to uh, recognize Kira's mom that's with her tonight, Barbara Joffrey. <laughs> Thank you for coming, Barbara. Okay, we've got two proclamations tonight and two certificates, a roll call right after roll call. Go ahead, Jean. Benelli? Yes. Duke? <laughs> Amo? Yes. Nagnostakis? Present. Benton? Here. Cheney, Baggio, Hines, Kulisek, Lujan, Menuda, O'Donnell, Ruskevich, Sassy, Sierra, Staganga, Sutherland, Tautel, Tui, Biro, Brescia. 21 present. Okay, for the all proclamation certificates, I'd like to invite up the county executive, Steve Newhouse. Oh, I would recognize that former Assemblyman and Town Supervisor Howard Mills is in the audience. Welcome, Howard. Join his retirement. And I'd also like to invite up for the first proclamation Lucy Joyce, Executive Director of Cornell Cooperative, uh, Dr. Paul Johnson, the President, 
of the Board of Directors and Legislator Paul Ruskevich uh, from the e e Committee. on the Capitol steps. I was on the Capitol steps a few years ago for the Zagrota bill, packed house Republicans and Democrats, and one of the most famous uh, performers in the music industry choked in the middle of the national anthem. And so, for, so when I see young men and women singing that and getting it, nailing it, it's not an easy thing. A lot of us in a room, when we've heard it a million times, Chairman, Chairman Brush and I saw the new superintendent of West Point last, last week at the air show, and my first words to him, he got out of his, his uh, Tahoe with his staff, I said, sir, you're late, you gotta get up, you gotta sing the national anthem. He's like, oh my God. <laughs> and everybody knows I was breaking his chops, but uh, Kira, I know she left already, you can give her my best wishes on it, I will say that. Okay, so is Lucy gonna come up and, oh, she's right here, okay. Okay. <laughs> Lucy, you wanna give us a little, Okay, uh, we're uh, thrilled to be celebrating over 100 years of work in Orange County. We've been extremely pleased with the support of the Orange County Legislature, Orange County uh, government uh, for all of those years. Because of that, you can be very proud of having one of the best associations in New York State uh, with a lot of research from Cornell University and other land grant universities coming here uh, to work here as well as going back. And we're very excited about our resilience project working with um, ACEs, Out of First Childhood Experiences, and your commissioner is very excited about it as well. So we're happy to work together on that. Thank you. Great. Paul? All right. Two Paul. Which one do you want? Let me make it easy. Well, I can't really say much more than Lucy has as a member of the Board of Directors and current president. I want to thank the legislature and the county executive, uh, Cornell Cooperative Extension. We do about a thousand things. Uh, we do them all relatively well, and we do some extremely well. And our staff could not be more devoted, more professional, and more dedicated to the cause. And I want to give them all a shout out to thank them all very much for their efforts. Okay, yeah, I just want to congratulate Extension for all the work that they do. Uh, prior to being a legislature, you know, as a farmer, uh, I was very familiar with what they do with the ag community. Uh, but since uh, being on the board and being the legislature's uh, representative on the board, I've uh, learned about all the other great things that they do in our community. And it really is uh, fantastic, everything you do. So thank you. Uh, we were in the tractor parade over in Montgomery over there, so I know it's near and dear to the chairman's heart. And I was a prior 4 h -er when I was a kid. I wasn't the model one. I told you I almost uh, set T uh, Tilly uh, Guiley's house on fire on the candle making night, but they, I was like three years old and they tried to trust me with it. But I got the hang of it now, and uh, it's just a wonderful program. And you guys do, I was eight, was I eight? <laughs> Don't say that. Uh, but anyway, we had a uh, great, I had a great experience with them and it's a joy working with, uh, with Cooperative Extension. Chairman Brescia. Lucy, you know how much we appreciate all that you guys do and ladies and uh, you know, on behalf of the county legislature, I present you with this proclamation and the last resolve says that we, the Orange County Legislature, hereby recognize the week of October 6th through the 12th, 2019 as National 4-H Week in Orange County. And it's signed by myself. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, next up we have Montgomery Little League. Oh, thank you, Paul. Okay. Montgomery Little League. Uh, manager Jim Murphy and coaches Mike Byrne, Jimmy Murphy, and Jeff Johnson. Come on up, guys, and coaches. Fantastic job. They won the state, uh, state championship today. The first time ever in Montgomery, I guess, Little League. Uh, very proud, extremely proud of you guys. We gave them a tour a little while ago at 6.30. We set that up. I'm sorry, you guys give you a rain check. The ladies, these guys, these ladies sent me a nice picture too. So I'm expecting one from you guys as well. 
But we went in your office okay. without permission. I called you twice, and I, I'm sure you. With my kids. You were with your kids. Your excuse, but uh, come on up, guys. We're gonna all of you come up because we're gonna mention each of your names. But we couldn't be more proud of you. And Montgomery Little League encompasses also the village of Walden, the town of Montgomery, the village of Maybrook, and, and part of the town of Crawford. So I would invite legislators Sassy and Agnes Dacus to join me up here as well to honor these young gentlemen and coaches. Jim, would you just give us a little synopsis of how far they went and what they did, if you don't mind? Um, well, they won the District 19, which was, these guys did a pretty good job. They rolled through that one. But then they went into the sections, and we, went, we won the first game. We ended up losing the second game. When the loser's bracket had to come back through the, and we beat that team twice to go to the state championship. So then we went through the states, went to the regions. We beat Massachusetts. Long Island and Connecticut. We lost to Jersey and Maryland, but it was a fun run. Great job, great job, Coach. That's a huge honor, and we couldn't be more proud of what you did. Is there a list that I can read off of the names, or should I have the coach do it? It's in this, it's in each certificate, or is it in a? I don't see the paper, Gene. Yeah. Huh? Okay. Maybe I should have the coach read the names because I'm sure I'm going to mispronounce a couple. Oh, there it is over there. Okay. Okay, here we go. Yep. Okay. All right, we have manager James Murphy to my left. Uh, Mike Byrne, Jimmy Murphy, and Jeff Johnson, all coaches. Noah Booth, Chris Byrne, Evan Johnson, James Joyce, John Kelly. Jason Murphy, John Scotto, Colin Quinn, William Quinn, William Trico, Sean Watson, and John Wentick. Uh, you know, the most important thing we talk about this, and a lot of us were at Senator Larkin's funeral in Wake the last couple days, his mantra was, there's no I in team. And so much in life is, is made up about teamwork, working together, the county legislature, the county executive, whether you're at your house, your marriage, your family, your friendships. And uh, we are so proud of you guys. And uh, we're, we couldn't say enough to, to winning and being successful. And that's because of the hard work you do as a team. Legislators, you guys? OK. Thank you. You want to distribute them to everybody? You'll distribute them to all the players then? Do we want to get a picture, Justin? Do you want to bring all the bring them all in? You guys cut yeah, we like there. the colors. <laughs> hey guys, bring it in a little bit. You go take a knee. Justin, you'll post the yeah. picture of this for the families on yep. the county paper ticket. Next year, World Series, guys. Did you? Just for, I know you got Walkill Montgomery here and the athletic team. The guy with the good hair, dude, right here, take a picture, Justin, was a sports writer for the record. He might have ruined some of your older kids' oh. scholarships <laughs> or major scholarships. Oh. And he's still in the business. I'm good with him. Matt's, I'm Matt's good with him. So uh, if you might want to stay friends with him, he's still doing some reporting and the radio show, right, once a week? Yeah. So maybe you could throw a few bones to uh, Montgomery and uh, walk him. Sure. Okay. No pressure. Yeah. I'm the boss. <laughs>
Um, yeah, Walk Hill. So Rob Stassi, stay up. Mike, thank you. Janet, come up. You cover Walk Hill. Who else covers Walk Hill? Mike Paduk, of course. See, where's Mike Paduk? Minority leader. And while they're coming up, I just have to give a shout out to my good friend, uh, Denise Quinn, good friend of mine. Her nickname is Weenie. It's on the, it's on the airwaves now. But her two of her children, I guess, or three of her children are championship uh, step dancers. And she took them to Vancouver this summer. She, she does everything. Kevin Hines, she gave me my stress test last year, too, and she gave, said I came through with flying colors, by the way. That's <laughs> Yeah, you guys give me. I need a new one, Weenie, all right? But uh, thank you, and Penny Quinn, too, big family. I'm always on the good side of the Quinns because uh, there's a lot of votes in the village, and you don't want to tick that family off. But, but thanks for coming. I'm just kidding, just kidding. Um, ladies, uh, you want to come up with the coaches from the, the town of Walk Hill, too, for doing an amazing job as well, winning the state championship. Howard Mills, why don't you come up to former supervisor town of Walkill? Come on, you're retired. Okay, let me get, let me read the list, and then I will ask Coach Dan McNamara to say a few words. Oh, he's not here. John Howell, does he want to say a few words? Okay, good. And I covered the town of Walkill, so I'm equally proud with you guys yeah. as well. Okay, first off, I'll introduce the players, the young ladies: Morgan Brady, Nate Burley, is it? Uh -huh. Carmen Diaz. Jessica Fowler, Mariana Gabrielle, Kate Greer, Kaylee Howell, Cameron Howell? Cameron. Cameron Howell, okay, that's a different way to spell it. Samantha Marizio, Kayla McNamara, Kayla Murtaugh. Kaylee Murtaugh. Kaylee, okay, I stand corrected. Liliana Ramirez, no, you better say that one. <laughs> Layla? Layla, Layla, Layla Selter, but no, I, for, I missed this one right here. Nevea. Nevea Ramirez, I never would have gotten that. And I habla espanol un poquito. Um, <laughs> and legislator Mike Paduk is here too. Um, you want to say a few words first and then introduce the coach? Yeah, I, it, for me it's a pretty ironic situation. I coached in the town of Walkill for 15 years, and I thought I was a big shot because we had a District 19 champion. I coached senior girls as well. And uh, we were the first ones to win the District 19 championship. And then you come along in 2019, and these girls, I'll tell you what they did. They played, uh, they had to play four, ga three games to win the district. They played four games in the, in the regionals, right? Yep. And then they played four more games. With only four left, they could have been our representative in the Little League World Series. So can't be more proud than, uh, of these girls <laughs> than any coach or anybody else. So coach, you No, I just want to say uh, it was an amazing run that we did have. Um, we made a lot of great memories along the way. Um, the team that we beat, I won't mention the town, but the team that we beat for districts, it was bittersweet because they won it last year. So it was, it was bittersweet to win that from them. Um, and then we went down to Haverstraw. Same thing like Montgomery, we lost the first game to them, so we had to play them twice. Um, same day, yeah, and it was like, it was so hot and humid. Um, we beat them fairly easily, I would say, the first game, and then the second game was a barn burner, right down to the last out. Like, it, it was epic. Um, some of our kids play travel ball, Kaylee Murtaugh. We're like biting our fingernails, like Kaylee, hurry up and get here. Um, you know, we, we pretty much had one pitcher, and she was out of gas, and so it was amazing. Um, and then we went to uh, Massachusetts for regionals. Um, a lot of us do travel ball, school ball, um, but the Little League is, it's, my, it's in my heart, it's in my passion. All, my, my daughters, Kaylee and Cameron, play. As a matter of fact, they're all my daughters, actually. That's how I treat them. Um, But um, yeah, it's it's just it's great to coach them, you know, when they're little and they and they get and they get bigger and older and you see them progress and um, grow up and so yeah, it was it was pretty amazing and it, seven of us aged out, so it was their last uh, hurrah. But I uh, I'm driven to get back there again next year and get to the World Series. So keep on pushing. But, Thank you, Coach. We're, count, we're counting on you to do that, definitely. 
and we're in awe of what you guys do. I know I'm in the kid rush with my boy with baseball sometimes, and Rob Sassy coaches baseball, and I, I just can't imagine what you guys and, and mothers and fathers and families go through where you have to go and to get them motivated like you do. And uh, uh, you know, I've been here 25 years, and I'm in awe of, of this. We, we, I don't think we ever had one state champion here, but to have two in the same night is truly amazing. So a uh, big round of applause for both of them. I'm just going to echo what the chairman said. It's the coaches, and Mike Paduk said the same thing. My girls are both in Chester, and we don't play against Walk Hill or Montgomery, so we're good. Our, our opponents, it's fitting that Howard Mills is up here, because Howard's girls go to Goshen, and my girls go to Chester, and we're rivals, as well as Florida, where is Ruscavich over there. But uh, it's the coaches, and Chester's Little League is run by a lot of off-duty New York City cops and they're always struggling to try to um, make the time work, and we see the moms and dads stepping up, so uh, without you guys, it wouldn't be possible, so thank you. We're playing Chester and floorball. Oh, boy. <laughs> <laughs> well, enjoy this camaraderie while we have it. <laughs> Thanks again, Coach, and we're going to give you these certificates to get to the fine young ladies. You want to bring all the... Yeah. All right, you want to bring all the players up here? Thank you again. And this lady, Jess Fowler, coach pointed out that she hits him over the fence. She's quite a, quite a slugger. Um, I would like to give one other shout out to uh, Jen Bissinger, president of Montgomery Little League. She's all about coalescing teams, team spirit, getting things together, events, and, and she even comes to village board meetings. That's how dedicated she is. But uh, thank you, Jen, for all you do. Okay, last but not least, we have a proclamation recognizing September 2019 as National Recovery Month. And I would invite the county exec, uh, Darcy, and Rob Sassy to speak, and Rob will recognize the Opioid Education Committee as well. Yeah, I'd like the opioid committee to come up as well. Kevin, this will be about 20, 25 minutes. You have to use the bathroom. You want to go now? Okay. All right, opioid committee, Kevin, you join us up here, please. Joel. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, uh, September is National Recovery Month, and I'm proud to stand here today. And the ladies and gentlemen you see behind me, all 21 legislators have been incredible the cooperation which it should be uh, in dealing with the opioid epidemic I'm very proud of my democrat and republican colleagues here in the legislature who have fought to get funding and fought to fight the ugly opioid epidemic so this evening we want to recognize national recovery month by issuing a procl proclamation for all of orange county i'm going to ask commissioner darcy miller to speak and to recognize those agencies that are in the room here this evening that provide unbelievable service and are, are, are committed to helping fight this epidemic and helping to get the resources and the help that people desperately need. We are blessed in Orange County with so many of these great organizations that the commissioner will mention. Darcy. Thank you. With all the good news here tonight, I'm excited to be here talking about something really positive. Often I come here and talk about very sad things, and recovery is a very exciting thing. It is hopeful, and we need to acknowledge the 24 million Americans who are in recovery 
in this country today. The sponsors of this proclamation are Linda Muller from Cornerstone, Kristen Jensen from Catholic Charities, and Michelle McKeon from Recap. We have guests here. We have Nadja Allen. And oh my goodness, I'm not gonna have everybody's name, but Jim Conklin, I'm sorry. Regina, yes, Regina from Catholic Charities. Lauren Mandel, who's an amazing advocate on behalf of those who are struggling with opioid addiction. Long and short, when we talk about the opioid addiction and any addiction, it's a chronic disease. Nine in 10 of people who are struggling with addiction do not seek treatment, are not in treatment. We're all working hard to send the message out there that if you come to us, our doors are open. We have best practice interventions for you, and you can recover, you can get better. You can live your life in each person's journey. Jim Conklin is probably one of the best to talk about the uniqueness of each person's recovery path and how we need to respect that. Most importantly, we need to remove the stigma around addiction or we won't get to the other side of the challenge of addiction. So I appreciate your acknowledgement. Our county executive, our county legislators are always so supportive of the work that we all do. And we in county government couldn't do it without the amazing non-for-profits the Federal Qualified Healthcare Centers, and the volunteers and the foundations in our community that make a difference. So thank you for the acknowledgement of this month. Thank you, Commissioner, and thank you to all the organizations that are here this evening. Hope Not Handcuffs, a new program in Orange County, unfortunately couldn't make it due to a prior commitment, but we are taking steps in the right direction. The Commissioner is correct. We've got to get past the stigma. People need help. I've gotten over the, the idea, and, and my colleague Joel Sierra and I spoke earlier, getting over that stigma. It's not a choice for people. It's a disease, and we need to treat it as a disease. County Executive, you'd like to say a few words? Sure, thank you. Uh, you know, this is something that we've been tackling and, and fighting against, and these partners are invaluable, as uh, Legislator Sassy said. Uh, we have the, if you go on the County Executives of America website, their opening thing is a two-hour discussion on lawsuits against the uh, manufacturers of prescription drugs, which are what they say attributable to about 80% of people that have addiction uh, problems in the United States. And it's just staggering the counties across America that are facing the same problem as we have in Orange County and trying different tr uh, trends constantly to try to, to really uh, turn the tide of, of this real uh, disastrous uh, plague that's, that's impacted our community. In the next few months, the county legislature and I are gonna be hashing out the county budget. One of the biggest challenges we have, and probably the toughest thing we've seen in our tenures, Chairman Brescia and I have been together here in county government, is radical changes coming down from Albany. And I've talked to Nadia uh, right before this, and, and Darcy as, as well as us, uh, the legislature, how are we gonna tackle these? January 1st, less incarcerations, uh, different types of treatment facilities. So it could go one of two ways, and we're working uh, collaboratively to make sure that we have uh, the right balance and uh, hopefully make it something that's a positive. Uh, but that is something that we're gonna be hashing on the next couple months, and I, I couldn't ask for a better team. This legislature is engaged. Uh, Legislator Sassy started this subcommittee on this. That's how important it is to us. So again, uh, hats off to everybody involved. Thank you, Steve. Mr. Chairman? I would just echo what the county exec said, um, and I would recognize the two members of the Independence Caucus, too. We are all unanimous in this fight, unanimous in this fight against, you know, for recovery, opioid addiction, and uh, we'll pledge our resources um, throughout our tenure. Okay, thank you again. Um, and uh, who's, you want to say something, Nadia? Yes, absolutely. Come on up. Again, Darcy introduced me. I'm Nadja with Mental Health Association, Orange County. I'm the executive director. And I have to do a little shameless plug-in. We started in Orange County a few months ago in April. This amazing collaborative um, that's called the Orange County Crisis Call Center. We're located around here uh, with an incredible group of individuals that is try, you know, taking telephonic crisis uh, redirecting resources for mobile mental health response to your homes, to under the bridge, wherever the person may be. And we also have peers, which are individuals who have lived experience with mental health or chemical dependence issues that will come and will meet you. 
So this county, and I have to thank our county executive, Darcy Millett's leadership, and our county executive, and this amazing legislature that we have here to support this initiative that's not like many that are in our New York State. I dare to say, I think we're the only one that is co-locating in a 911 center. So we have this amazing uh, resource with the 911 center. Our number right now, write it down if you don't know, you've seen in billboards, you've probably received emails, but it's 1-800-832-1200, 1-800-832-1200 for any issues you may have around mental health or chemical dependence issues and a myriad of reasons, including rape crisis and any veterans in shoes and developmental disabilities. So we cover all areas in our community and we're so proud to be partners with Access Supports for Living. I see Lori right here with our mobile mental health team. Independent Living is a wonderful partner and we could not be happier with the support that we get from the county. So it would be remiss of me to not thank our county executive and this amazing group of people here that believe in the work that we do and we are doing unprecedented work and we're gonna set a trend and we're gonna be a role model and we're definitely a best practice already. So thank you, thank you, thank you. And please use us, 1-800-832-1200. Thank you. Thank you very much. If you know someone that, that needs help, there is no shame. The help is available. Help them get it. And just, this is about National Recovery Month. We have numerous occasions where we see law enforcement or EMTs that are bringing somebody back. One police department in Orange County alone, every one of the officers, including the police chief, has brought somebody back with Narcan this year. Every one of those people. And those are people that get a second shot, get a second chance from God to hopefully go into recovery, be treated by one of these organizations that we partner with to uh, get their life straightened out. So, uh, we work with families, we work with individuals, and uh, we're looking forward to continue to hopefully uh, turn that tide. Great, thank you very much. Mr. Chairman, you have the proclamation? Yes. <coughs> okay, I'll read the first uh, res part, the whereas and the last resolve. Uh, resolution of the Orange County Legislature and the Orange County Executive recognizing September 2019 as National Recovery Month. Whereas mental health, or mental and substance abuse rather, use disorders including co-occurring co disorders affect all communities nationwide. But with the commitment and support, people with these disorders can achieve healthy lifestyles and lead rewarding lives in recovery. By seeking help, people who experience mental and substance abuse disorders and co-occurring disorders can embark on a new path toward improved health and over, overall wellness. The focus of National Recovery Month this September is to celebrate their journey with the theme, Join the Voices for Recovery. Together we are stronger. Resolved that the Orange County Legislature and the Orange County Executive do hereby proclaim the month of September 2019 as Recovery Month in Orange County, New York, and call upon the people of Orange County to observe this month with uh, appropriate programs, activities, and ceremonies to support this year's National Recovery Month and to provide support and encouragement to those individuals and their families and loved ones who are in the, on their journey to recovery so they may join enjoy, excuse me, the improved health and overall wellness. Stephen M. Newhouse and L. Stephen Brescia. Darcy, you'll, you'll. Thank you again. Justin, what do you want us to do? <laughs> Tighten it up. Take a knee. Yeah, take a knee. Take a knee. We <laughs> can't get back up. <laughs> Jim, come on in here, snuggle in here. Ladies, Legislator Benton just informed me that his uh, grandson's team went to, where did they do, Lee? They were the Southeast representative in the uh, Junior Little League World Series in Taylor, Michigan this year. Yeah, that's awesome, too. They, they that's lost. flew out, right? They, yeah, they lost to the California team who ended up winning it all. Oh, boy. Amazing. It is. It's fun. It really is. Those are the only two speakers tonight? Okay. Can you speak?
Okay, we have one speaker signed up for before and one after, and they're both Ron Animal Hughes. I would recognize Animal before you speak that uh, former chairman of the legislature, Mike Pillmeyer, is in the back row, too. Thanks for coming, Mike. Should have brought you up for CCE presentation. Thanks for coming. Okay. Thank you for recognizing me, Mr. Chairman. The last time I was up here, right, we spoke about the prospect of selling properties adjacent to the ancient caves in Goshen next to the nursing home. <clears throat> I see it's number 14 on the agenda item for tonight, but I don't see any appraisal prices, and I know it's just being teed up for a vote, but I would like to caution everyone involved with this thing to spell out some specifications for protections of the caves and look at these two parcels as an independent entity, not as one area or one thing that we're looking at. We have the mines and we have the caves. I don't see any prescriptive protections for the caves. I don't see an appraisal price and I heard that there's a, a suggested price of $500,000 as a minimum for this. There's $10 million worth of aggregates in those mines alone. I think that the price needs to be looked at and I think we need to get a professional appraiser to come out and take a look at what that property's worth with comps. And there are comps of that same nature other, where, other places, maybe not in the county, but they can tell you what a mine is worth in today's market. So if you would, I would like further consideration uh, for the mines, but more so, especially for the protection of the caves. We can't replace them. If something happens to them uh, because of bad mining practices or the new owner isn't such a good neighbor, we could lose a very valuable piece of our heritage, our mankind history. So I, I'll speak a little later about what we might need to do, but. I wanted to put that in your ear before you tee this up for sale. I'm not against the sale, but I think the sale should be done in a way where we can conduct business and control what goes on there for the future for the protection of the caves. Thank you. Thank you, Animal. Okay, uh, Majority Leader Benelli. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I respectfully uh, move to approve the minutes of June 6th and July 2nd, 2019. Second. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Carried. Majority Leader Benelli again. Hey, thank you again, Mr. Chairman, and I respectfully ask to move the vote collectively on items number 4 through 6, 20 through 23, and 26 through 28. Second. Discussion? Okay, there's no uh, debate, we'll, uh, that'll be done. Okay, any referrals, withdrawals, or consents? Legislator Riskovich. Uh, yes, I'd like to request that uh, items number uh, 14 and 15 be withdrawn for one month. Okay, if there are no objections, or do we need a vote on that? No objections, we'll do it, okay, good. All right, now on to the... Uh, the agenda, 1A or A is receive and file, number one. No problem. Legislators Fagione and Staganga, an act amending the management compensation plan and schedule, salary schedule for the Orange County management plan pursuant to section 2.02 G, G and H of the Orange County Charter. Second. Discussion? Bureau added. Roll call. Benelli? Yes. Paduk? No. Amo? Yes. And Agnostakis? Benton? Yes. Cheney? Fagione? Hines? Kulisek? Wuhan? No. Minuta? Yes. O'Donnell? Riskevich? Yes. Sassy? Sierra? Staganga? Yes. Sutherland? Tautel? Yes. Tui? Bureau? Yes. Brescia? 17 eyes, four no's. John, we pulled uh, the, 
the quarry resolution, you know that, okay, you're still gonna stick around anyway? Okay, God bless you. <laughs> Number two. Legislators Faggione, Benton, Vero, and Benelli. An act amending the appropriate Orange County employment schedules to abolish associate account clerk two and create fiscal manager at the Orange County Department of Law pursuant to section 2.02i of the Orange County Charter. Second. Discussion? Roll call. Benelli? Yes. Paduk? Yes. Amo? Yes. Anagnostakis? Benton? Cheney? Faggione? Hines? Kulisek? Lujan? Menuda? O'Donnell, Ruskevich, Sassy, Sierra, Staganga, Sutherland, Tautel, Tui, Vero, Brescia. 21 eyes. Okay, number three. Legislators Lujan, Sierra, Tautel, and Hines, an act amending the appropriate Orange County employment schedules to create assistant fire coordinator part-time and emergency management program coordinator part-time at the Orange County Department of Emergency Services pursuant to section 2.02i of the Orange County Charter. Uh, okay, Fagione Bureau added, Staganga added, Paduk added, roll call. Benelli? Yes. Paduk? Yes. Amo? Yes. Anagnostakis? Benton? Cheney, Fagione, Hines, Kulisek, Lujan, Menuda, O'Donnell, Ruskevich, Sassy, Sierra, Staganga, Sutherland, Tautel, Tui, Vero, Brescia. 21 eyes. Okay, four through six collectively. Roll call. Benelli? Yes. Paduk? Yes. Amo? Yes. Anagnostakis, Benton, Cheney, Fagione, Hines, Kulisek, Lujan, Menuda, O'Donnell, Ruskevich, Sassy, Sierra, Staganga, Sutherland, Tautel, Tui, Vero, Brescia. 21 eyes. Okay, 7A, receive and file number seven. Local law introductory number three of 2019. I'm sorry, sponsors. Legislators Paduk and Kulisek. Local law introductory number three of 2019. A local law entitled Orange County Apprenticeship Training Requirements. Discussion? Yes, Legislator Cheney. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. While I appreciate the important role and contributions of unions and recognize the value of maintaining a skilled workforce through apprenticeship and employee training, I have some reservations about this particular local law. I believe this law will increase the cost of the county projects as it limits the potential number of contractors and subcontractors allowed to bid on a project. It will also have a negative effect on medium to small sized construction and trades companies who would be eliminated from participating as a subcontractor because they do not subscribe to a qualified apprenticeship program. At the same time, these companies invest in the training of their employees in an effective process without the state approving the program. Further, I believe there should be a minimum amount, possibly twenty-five dollars to $50,000, below which a subcontract would be exempt from having an apprenticeship program. While aspects of this legislation have positive attributes, I believe that it would be appropriate to consider modifications that would address the issues. Thank you. Thank you. Legislator Fagione. Thank you, Chairman. <clears throat> it's my pleasure as the Chairman of the Rules Committee to have worked uh, diligently on this resolution before us today. And I'd like to thank my colleagues on both sides of the aisle and even the independents uh, for all their input and information on this. I also would uh, like to thank so many people, including a small business in my district who made it uh, apparent to me that as a contractor themselves, that they have seen the benefits of being a participant in the apprenticeship program themselves. Uh, as we all know, and I know that uh, Legislator Hines corrected me with some of my figures in a committee meeting, uh, the average cost of college continues to skyrocket. A uh, public in-state college right now can cost over $80,000 for a four-year degree. A private school can be in, ex in excess of over $200,000. Uh, the idea and concept behind the apprenticeship program is a training relationship between an employer and an employee. And these employees learn the skills that will lead to professional, independent, skilled workers. Now more than ever in Orange County and throughout or uh, New York State, we need more and more professional, independent, skilled workers who want to remain here in New York and to be part of our communities. I believe that this resolution before us will hope, will help so many of those people choose to stay here. I ask that my colleagues uh, consider this and vote yes. Thank you, Chairman.
Thank you. Kevin would know, certainly. <laughs> Ouch. <laughs> okay. Uh, Mr. Sierra, Joel Sierra, legislator. Added. Okay. Uh, Janice Sutherland? Added. Okay. Roll call. Benelli? Yes. Paduke? Yes. Amo? Yes. Anagnostakis? Benton? Cheney? No. Fagione? Yes. Hines? Yes. Kulisek? Yes. Lujan? Yes. Minuta? O'Donnell? Riskevich? Sassy? Sierra? Steganga? Sutherland, Totel, Tui, Bureau, Brescia. 20 ayes, one no. Okay. Thank you, and I would like to thank Matt Ross, uh, sitting in the fourth row out there, for coming to two or three, at least two, maybe three uh, statutory meetings to explain many of the questions that were asked. Thank you, Matt. Okay, number eight. Legislators Paduke and Fagione, resolution approving the Transit Title VI program for the Department of Planning. Second. Discussion? Roll call. Benelli? Yes. Paduke? Yes. Amo? Yes. Anagnostakis? Benton? Cheney? Fagione? Hines? Pulisek? Lujan? Minuta? O'Donnell? Ruskevich? Sassy? Sierra? Steganga? Sutherland? Totel? Tui? Vero? Brescia? 21 eyes. Okay, number nine. Legislators Hines and Benelli, resolution authorizing the county executive in conjunction with the Orange County Department of Planning to accept and appropriate funds from the New York State Department of Transportation pursuant to section 99-H of a general municipal law and section 4.09 of the Orange County Charter. Discussion? Ragione added. Roll call. Benelli? Yes. Paduke? Yes. Amo? Yes. Anagnostakis? Benton? Cheney? Fagione? Hines? Kulisek? Lujan, Minuta, O'Donnell, Riskevich, Sassy, Sierra, Steganga, Sutherland, Tortel, Tui, Vero, Brescia. 21 eyes. Okay, number 10. Legislators Fagione, Benelli, Amo, Cheney, Hines, Kulisek, Paduk, and Vero. Resolution recognizing September 15, 2019 through October 15, 2019 as National Hispanic Heritage Month. I'm not even going to look up. I imagine everybody wants to be on this. Okay. Everybody, right? I would think so. Okay, so granted. Uh, discussion? Roll call. Benelli? Yes. Paduke? Yes. Amo? Yes. Anagnostakis, Benton, Cheney, Fagione, Hines, Kulisek, Lujan, Minuta, O'Donnell, Riskevich, Sassy, Sierra, Steganga, Sutherland, Totel, Tui, Vero, Brescia, 21 eyes. And number 11. Legislators Paduke, Vero, Benton, and Sutherland. Resolution authorizing the county executive in conjunction with the Orange County Board of Elections to accept and appropriate grant funds from the state of New York pursuant to section 99-H of the general municipal law and section 4.09 of the Orange County Charter. Second. Discussion? Fagione added. Oh, okay. oh, no, I'm sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm going too quickly here. Okay, Fag Legislator Fagione. I appreciate your diligence. <laughs> Presented here before us in these next two resolutions are uh, two resolutions regarding the latest election laws and changes made by our state government in Albany. As written, these resolutions ask Orange County taxpayers to pay more than $300,000 for laws written in Albany by Albany politicians. To me, this is a modern day version of taxation without representation. At no time were county officials able to vote on these matters, no. However, we were left with the bill and the audacity in Albany to say, here's the new laws, now you find a way to pay. This Orange County Legislature has 24 functions that are enumerated in our legislative manual. Included in those functions are to enact, amend, or to repeal or make local laws, ordinances, or resolutions. In other words, it's our duty to pass laws, county laws, that address county issues. We also have a duty to adopt a budget and exercise financial oversight over our county departments. We make laws, we pass laws, and we require that our actions are also enacted that these laws are funded. In Albany, you'd think the same would be true. A, po a problem arises. The state seeks a resolution. But often there's a catch. And that catch can be cost local governments millions and millions of dollars. In Albany, that catch is called an unfunded mandate. We've all heard this phrase. And we've all felt the sting it puts on our budget and that of our municipalities. Sadly, these election proposals before us are a glaring example. Albany politicians demanded these new laws. 
Albany politicians wrote up these new laws, and Albany politicians passed these new voting laws. What they forgot to do, however, was to pay for them, or did they? Yes, they passed what has been called sweeping changes to the election process, sweeping changes. But what they swept under the rug is the fact that they didn't intend to fully fund these changes, forcing counties such as ourselves and counties across the state to pick up a portion of the bill. Hey, you don't believe me? Just this April, during a state seminar on these new voting laws, Assemblyman Charles Levine, chairman of the Committee on Election Law, he said, and I quote him, none of us believe state spending is going to cover all the costs. Our portion, the resolutions today before us, seek to bond over $300,000 of Orange County taxpayer money for Albany actions. These are laws made in Albany by Albany politicians, passed by Albany politicians, paid for by Orange County tax dollars. To that, I say no, Chairman. Thank you. Legislator Lujan, sponsor. Okay, sponsor. Legislator Minuta, you want to say something? Go ahead. If you're not mad about this, you're not paying attention. This is gross negligence and a waste of funds. Uh, writing a ballot, as we've done for decades, centuries, a piece of paper is really all we need. Um, when you look at how this is being spent, it's all going to uh, internet and um, other wireless companies. The process is still the same. And I think what's even more maddening, the backup to this system is a paper copy. So why are we duplicating the efforts? I really don't understand it. Thank you. Okay. Roll call. Benelli? Regrettably, yes. Paduk? Yes. Amo? Yes. Anagnostakis? Benton? Cheney? Faggio? No. Hines? Kulasek? Lujan? Yes. Menuda? Under protest, yes. O'Donnell? Ruskevich? Sassy? Sierra? Steganga? Yes. Sutherland? Tautel? Tui? No. Bureau? Brescia. Nin Regrettably, yes, also. 19 ayes, 2 noes. Okay, number 12, bond resolution supermajority required. Legislators Benelli, Bureau, and Benton. Bond resolution dated September 5, 2019. Bond resolution of the County of Orange, New York, authorizing the acquisition of hardware, software, and related components for early voting, stating the estimated maximum cost thereof is $668,266.75, appropriating said amount, therefore, including 293891 expected to be received from the State of New York, and authorizing the issuance of $374,375.75 bonds of the county to finance the balance of said appropriation. Discussion? Roll call. Oh, Lujan added? Yes. Okay. Lujan added. Roll call. Benelli? Yes. Paduk? Yes. Amo? Yes. Anagnostakis? Benton? Cheney? Fagione? No. Hines? Kulasek? Lujan? Yes. Minuta? Yes. O'Donnell? Ruskevich? Sassy? Sierra? Steganga? Sutherland? Tautel? Tui, Bureau, Brescia, 19 eyes, two noes. Okay, number 13. Oh, oops, 14's withdrawn, okay. 13 is good. <laughs> Legislators Kulasek, Cheney, and Paduke. Resolution in support of the Town of Crawford's grant application as part of the Dwork Hill Pine Bush Water Supply Project. Discussion. Paduke added. Manute? Paduk's on. Paduk's on already? Okay, you want to be added, but I didn't hear the rest. You want to say a few words? Go ahead, Joe. Uh, as, a, as a former member of the Orange County Water Authority, um, this is a project that uh, we oversaw for many years. I'm so happy to see this moving forward, and uh, I highly endorse this and look forward to the outcome. Thank you. Thank you. Legislator Sassy. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, this is a combined effort with Dave Church, 
County Executive and the Water Authority, as uh, Legislator Manu just mentioned. And this is county-owned property, and there is no money involved. We're simply asking for the county to be the lead agency uh, for a grant application that is due a week from tomorrow. So that's what we're looking for, and I appreciate your support. Thank you. Thank you. Roll call. Yes, that's the added. Benelli? Yes. Paduk? Yes. Amo? Yes. Anagnostakis? Benton, Cheney, Fagione, Hines, Kulasek, Luhan, Menuda, O'Donnell, Ruskevich, Sassy, Sierra, Staganga, Sutherland, Tartell, Tui, Vero, Brescia. 21 eyes. Okay, number four, uh, 14 is withdrawn. Number 15, super. 14 and 15, and 15 I'm sorry. Okay, 16. Legislators Minuta and Benton, resolution authorizing the county executive in conjunction with the Orange County Department of Public Works Airport to accept grant funds from the New York State Department of Transportation pursuant to section 99-H of a general municipal law in section 4.09 of the Orange County Charter. Second. Discussion, zero added, Tui added, Stagenga added. Roll call. Benelli? Yes. Paduke? Yes. Amo? Yes. Anagnostakis? Benton? Cheney, Fagione, Hines, Kulasek, Luhan, Menuda, O'Donnell, Ruskevich, Sassy, Sierra, Staganga, Sutherland, Tautel, Tui, Vero, Brescia. 21 eyes. Okay, number 17. Legislators Tui, Benelli, and Kulasek. Resolution authorizing the county executive to grant a 20 year temporary easement to the village of Monroe. Second. Discussion? Roll call. Benelli? Yes. Paduke? Yes. Emo? Yes. Anagnostakis? Benton? Cheney? Fagione? Hines? Kulasek? Luhan? Menuda? O'Donnell? Ruskevich? Sassy? Sierra? Staganga? Sutherland? Tartell? Tui? Vero? Brescia? 21 eyes. Okay. Number 18, right? Mm -hmm. Legislators Benelli and Tui, resolution authorizing the county executive to accept a proposed right-of-way dedication parcel in the village of Carisjo, town of Palm Tree. Second. Discussion? Hemo added. Roll call. Oh. Okay, Totel added too. Roll call. Benelli? Yes. Duke? Yes. Emo? Yes. Anagnostakis? Benton? Cheney? Fagione? Hines? Kulasek? Luhan? Menuda, O'Donnell, Ruskevich, Sassy, Sierra, Staganga, Sutherland, Tortell, Tui, Vero, Brescia. 21 eyes. And number 19. Legislator Benton, resolution authorizing the private sound conveyance of certain county owned lands acquired by reason of a failure to redeem said lands from a tax sale to Orange County pursuant to section 10184 of the real property tax law and Orange County amended local law number two of 2010. Thanks. Discussion? Roll call. Benelli? Yes. Paduke? Yes. Amo? Yes. Anagnostakis? Benton? Cheney? Fagione? Hines? Kulasek? Luhan? Menuda? O'Donnell? Ruskevich? Sassy? Sierra? Staganga? Sutherland? Tartell? Tui? Vero? Brescia? 21 eyes. Okay, 20 through 23 collectively. Benelli? Yes. Paduke? Yes. Amo? Yes. Anagnostakis? Benton? Cheney, Fagione, Hines, Kulasek, Luhan, Menuda, O'Donnell, Ruskevich, Sassy, Sierra, Staganga, Sutherland, Tortell, Tui, Vero, Brescia. 21 eyes. And number 24. Legislators Tui, Sutherland, O'Donnell, Amo, and Agnostakis, Tortell, Paduke, Benelli. Resolution requesting New York State Commissioner of Health to adjust the Medicaid transportation reimbursement fee schedule for Orange County. Discussion? All Dems, all Republicans. And I'd also like to thank um, Leader Amo for bringing this to our attention. Yes, thank you, Leader Amo. It was very informative. We didn't, we never would have known that otherwise. But thank you. Okay, roll call. Benelli. Yes. Paduke. Yes. Amo. Yes. Anagnostakis, Benton, Cheney, Fagione, Hines, Kulasek, Luhan, Menuda, O'Donnell, Ruskevich, Sassy, Sierra, Staganga, Sutherland, Tartell, Tui, Vero, Brescia, 21 eyes. And number 25. Legislators Tui and Tartell, resolution making a supplemental appropriation to the 2019 Orange County budget for the Orange County Veterans Service Agency pursuant to section 
4.09 of the Orange County Charter. Yes, our Majority Leader. All Republicans. Okay. Roll call. Benelli? Yes. Oh, Sierra added too, I'm sorry. Okay. And Luhan added? 24, you want to be added to? Okay, retro, no problem. All Dems are on it. Mm -hmm. Oh, all Dems are on it. Okay. Ready? Yep. Benelli? Yes. Okay. <laughs> Paduk? Maybe once you join the university. It's done 25. Paduk? Yes. I'm sorry. <clears throat> all right, you guys, straighten up. Amo? <laughs> Anagnostakis? Benton? Cheney? Fagione, Hines, Kulasek, Luhan, Minuta, O'Donnell, Ruskevich, Sassi, Sierra, Staganga, Sutherland, Totel, Tui, Vero, Brescia, 21 eyes. Okay, 26 through 28 collectively. Roll call. Benelli? Yes. Paduk? Yes. Amo? Yes. Nagnostakis? Benton, Cheney, Fagione, Hines, Kulasek, Luhan, Minuta, O'Donnell, Ruskevich, Sassi, Sierra, Staganga, Sutherland, Totel, Tui, Vero, Brescia, 21 eyes. Okay, 29. Legislator Staganga and Menuda, resolution making a supplemental appropriation to the 2019 Orange County budget for the Office of Community Development, pursuant to section 4.09 of the Orange County Charter. Discussion. Tatel added. Lujan added. A okay, roll call. Benelli? Yes. Paduk? Yes. Amo? Yes. Anagnostakis, Benton, Cheney, Fagione, Hines, Kulasek. Luhan, Menuda, O'Donnell, Ruskevich, Sassi, Sierra, Staganga, Sutherland, Totel, Tui, Vero, Brescia. 21 eyes. Okay, number 30. Legislators Cheney and Staganga. Resolution making a supplemental appropriation to the 2019 Orange County budget for the Orange County Youth Bureau pursuant to section 4.09 of the Orange County Charter. Second. Okay, um, Totel, Luhan, Tui, Sierra, Ruskevich, Sutherland, Sassi, a Duke. Anybody else? Okay, roll call. Minuta. Benelli? Yes. A Duke? Yes. Amo? Yes. Anagnostakis, Benton, Cheney, Fagione, Hines, Kulasek, Luhan, Minuta, O'Donnell, Ruskevich, Sassy, Sierra, Staganga, Sutherland, Totel, Tui, Vero, Brescia. 21 eyes, Mr. Chairman, and the desk is clear. Okay, final speaker. We have one signed up, Animal Hughes again. We get you twice in one night. And while he's walking up, I would just remind everyone that this Saturday is General Montgomery Day in the village of Montgomery. Many of you are riding in the parade. Line up is at 9.30 at the, most of you, I think all of you, at the Orange County Airport. Parade steps off at 10.30. I proudly uh, say that my sister, Stacy Brescia Spear, Spear, is the Grand Marshal for the 30th Annual. Well-deserved recognition for her, and uh, she just had her 25th wedding anniversary. So after Saturday night, I'm gonna say to her, like my younger sister used to say to me, Enough about you. <laughs> Go ahead, animal. Both your sisters are quite a piece of work. <laughs> a younger one, right? Oh. So, first of all, I have to compliment you guys on the way you go at your work. I can tell everybody's doing their homework. I'm a little bit taken back about some of the comments that were made by Mr. Cheney about where you think there's not a benefit for apprenticeship programs. The state of New York, for the most part, regulates how we get our apprentices. I'm IBEW, retired 50 years I worked as an IBEW member, and I have a lot of experience about what went on with the prescriptions that are required for qualified apprenticeship programs. Labor agreements provide a way where the contractor can put more than the usual numbers of apprentices to balance out the budget, to balance, to make these things work. This isn't a pig in a poke. And I, and I don't know how much information you have, but I have rooms full of it. So if we look to the future and we take some of our retired members who are more than willing to come forward to nurture and explain and to make better ways of doing business. I would open that door for this body and, and there's people at the table here that are union members as well from various trades. There's a way to make this thing happen. Um, the other thing, I spoke to the county executive, he's a beekeeper as well as I am and I've been in the business for a long time. 
We talked about the possibility of putting a couple of hives in each municipality throughout the county to get a better idea parametrically of what is really going on with the bees. We are an agricultural county, and we don't need one guy with 600 hives. We need 600 guys with two hives. And this way here, we can get a better idea of what's going on by what we're looking at with the bees. So I could help you with that as well. 25 years ago, Southeastern beekeepers put the first two hives, I believe, in the state of New York in a county park. There's been no sting reports, no problems, no liabilities. They don't bother anybody. It's a harmless thing. There's a lot of uh, cooperative extension people. There's a lot of uh, CAC groups and farm groups and things. And there's parks throughout all of our municipalities. Steve seemed very interested in it. And if anybody would like to sign on with it, we're going to conjure up a way to try to make this happen. So th thank you, as always, for listening to what I have to say. Mr. Cheney, I'm not criticizing your comments. I'm saying that there seems to be a blur in the blend of the information that you're getting that's way off base. Please do. I'm easy enough to find. Can we get an apprenticeship program for the beekeepers, maybe? Yes, we can. <laughs> yes, we can. <laughs> okay. I can make a lot We're going to get a few, few of these ladies and gentlemen to sign up. Okay. Thank you, Animal. I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. All in favor? Opposed? Carried, of course.